Hey, hey, yeah, it's me again. Girl, you know where I'm at. I'm at Sycamore Shoals. Yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. We're gonna cross the Watauga today. That's right, we're on the road to Kings Mountain. Yeah, we're gonna get that Ferguson. Come along. Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. We are in Elizabethan, Tennessee. We are at Sycamore Shoals. Today is the muster and the crossing of the Watauga River. We're on the road to the Battle of Kings Mountain. Come along. You keep going. And, uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't know if you need to film this or, uh, Anyway. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Water out here. 
keep on it to keep it from drying hard. Well, I didn't fall down. Neither did I. <laughs> and I didn't freeze. Neither did I. I did good. I said, let's go do it again. This was great. <laughs> So work was free. We were to meet here at the Sycamore Show on the 25th of September. And we would put together a fighting force and go seek out Patrick Ferguson before he had a chance to come across the mountain. My countrymen, you are about to set out on an expedition filled with hardship and danger but one on which the Almighty will attend you. The mother country has her hands upon you, the American colonies, and takes away that for which our fathers brought their home into the wilderness, our liberty. Taxation without representation and the quartering of soldiers in the homes of our people without their consent are evidence that the crown of England would take from its American subjects the last vestige of freedom. Your brethren from across the mountains are crying out like Macedonia unto your aid. God forbid you should fail to hear or answer their call. But the call of your brethren is not all. The enemy is marching hither to destroy your own homes. Amen. You are not unacquainted with battle. Your hands have been taught to war and your fingers to fight. You have wrested the beautiful valleys of the Holston and Watauga from the savage hand. Would you tarry now while another enemy brings fire and sword to your very door? No, it shall not be. Go forth then in the strength of your manhood to the aid of your brethren, the defense of your liberty and the protection of your own. And may the God of justice go with you and bring you victory. Let us pray. And I have brought my family over the mountain back in 73. Like every other man that had crossed these mountains and joined the militia. Served under Colonel John Severe, the only Chucky Jacks, what we called him. And I gotta tell you, I have rode on many campaigns with this man over the years. But this was unlike anything we had ever experienced. Because every one of us knew we was riding against the most powerful army in the world. And we knew our chances were slim. We come riding into Quaker Meadows. It was owned by the McDowell's, Charles McDowell, one of the Patriot leaders. We come riding in there in the pouring rain. They were so gracious to us, they let us pull a little corn, brought a little beef in to feed us. We even took the top rail off the fence, burned it from firewood trying to dry out. And as I sat there that afternoon in the pouring rain, here come a whole group of men riding in from Surrey County, North Carolina. They was being led by Major Winston and a great big man named Benjamin Cleveland. Now I didn't know Ben Cleveland personally, but I've heard of the gentleman. He was notorious for hanging loyal. If he's loyal to King George, the last sound you hear would be your neck snap at the end of the rope because he'd hang him. I really liked that old man. And our army was growing. And as we lay there in the pouring rain that evening, the scout came in. They found Ferguson a few days' ride from us, camped at a place called Gilbert Town. We got up the next morning, took to the saddle, went thundering across the Tauber River, 
we was headed straight for him like a lightning bolt. I'm gonna put an end to this threat, and I can see it as plain as day. Old Isaac Shelby, he come riding right through our lines. He said, rest. I will not rest until I ride through the lines of Cornwallis himself. He fired us up and we kept riding. Now, right before three o'clock, by the grace of God, the rain had stopped. We were at the bottom of King's Mountain. Well, we hit that mountain the first time. They drove us back. We hit the mountain the second time. We went a little further, but once again, they pushed us back. But the third time, third time we hit that little mountain, we went almost to the top. You know, a lot of us older men remember when we was having trouble with the Cherokee, the Dragon Canoe, and Chickamaugas. <coughs> They'd come screaming out of them woods when they attacked the settlements to make your hair stand up and make your skin crawl. So as we hit that mountain, we were screaming our heads off like the Cherokee. But not only were we screaming like the Cherokee, we were fighting like the Cherokee because we had learned well.